Currently at risk, hazard communication in multiple parts of the supply chain, a challenge for many. In today's cartoon, two examples. Let's start with the squirrels. See no evil, hear no evil and speak no evil. That's one approach. However, if you want to know the hazards of your substances and mixtures and the risks involved in handling or using them, you need to open your eyes, ears and mouth and communicate throughout your supply chain, like the Marquettes do. Kevin Pollard from ECA and Alberto Lopez Hernandez from Givaudan are here to discuss useful tools and lessons learned that can help you to improve your supply chain communication. Let's start at the top of the supply chain. When receiving your hazardous raw materials from your suppliers, they hopefully also include safety data sheets. Alberto, how do you handle incoming SDS at Givaudan? Well, we started creating a repository, a database for all our supplier SDS, and people that receive the STS will send the documentation to this repository. And today we have taken advantage of the new technologies and we have automatized the process for the SDS check. That means we have kind of a robot that will review, check the information from the supplier SDS and compare to the information that we have in our systems. And if the robot finds any discrepancy, he or she will write us an email indicating the discrepancies that have been found. Okay, very interesting. Um, you probably have for one raw material several suppliers. Uh, what do you do with discrepancies between the SDS of the different suppliers? I mean, the information that we receive, all the discrepancies that are identified, need to be investigated and validated. So you will need to compare, you know, you need to check where the information is coming from and if this information, let's say, is justified and validate which, the, which is information that is correct. How do you communicate to your employees the information you receive from your suppliers? Yeah. I mean, everything is about communication, right? So we will inform and communicate to all sides that are using this material. I mean, we have a very robust EHNS organization, uh, GBODAN. We have local teams everywhere that help us because as you can imagine, you cannot be everywhere, right? So you need to empower people through development, training that can understand all the new information because at the end, you need to understand all the chemical properties of the materials, but also the hazards that you can define based on the working conditions, the right work instructions for the people handling the material. REACH introduced the extended SDS to focus on actual exposure scenarios yeah, by making risk assessments for specific uses. How does this enable the safe handling of hazardous materials? Well, basically the, the idea behind the exposure scenario is to develop uh, activity-specific safe use advice. Uh, that's the fundament of it. If you look um, prior to REACH, uh, larger companies receiving or handling chemicals, they would typically invest in, in performing their own risk assessment and developing worker safety advice, uh, also ensuring environmental safety. Um, so they would take the information they receive from their suppliers on the hazard, their knowledge of their own uses and their customers' uses, and they would, they would develop advice. The problem with that is that in smaller companies, SMEs, it can be difficult to, to find the resource or the expertise for that. So the whole idea of REACH is that the, the manufacturer, the importer, is best placed to understand and generate hazard information and should always also be best placed to understand their portfolio, the way their substances are used, and to perform that risk assessment top-down. Okay. Hey, and ECA, of course, developed several tools and methods to facilitate communication eh, on users, risks, and on exposure scenarios. What's the current state of play for that? Well, as, as you probably know, there's been, in the last 10 or so years, significant investments, not only from ECA, but also from industry member states, via what we call the INES network, so the uh, exchange network for exposure scenarios. So basically, there's a suite of tools and methods available, fairly comprehensive, um, just to give a, a, a bit closer insight, I would start with KSAR. This is an ECHA tool that's um, designed to enable and implement the registrant chemical safety assessment. Um, it's an IT tool. It can feed directly from Euclid, uh, especially the information on hazard. And if that changes, it can, it can reiterate the assessment. 
Then the NS products, there are basically three different types. Um, we have what we call use maps. These have been developed by different sector associations. They're a way of enhancing the consistency of the upstream communication, also augmenting problems with difficulties and complexity of upstream communication. So that's one element. Then there's been work on exposure scenario templates. So this is basically implementing the chemical safety uh, in terms of downstream communication. And then last but not least, there's been considerable work on methods for safe use advice for mixtures and exposure scenarios for mixtures. So again, the, the, there has been significant investment. The tools are in place, uh, but there are a number of barriers which the, the REACH review recommendations task ECHA, member states and industry to address. Kevin, when can we expect enforcement efforts in Europe to stimulate supply chain communication and especially on the risks? Well, the, the, I would say there's been a, already a significant investment from the enforcement authorities. Uh, in particular, uh, for example, the, the recent REF5 project which was basically looking at the, the compliance of um, safe use of information for registrations requiring uh, exposure scenario. Um, it's good to keep in mind when, when looking in the European context that enforcement's actually implemented at the national level according to national priorities. Uh, there are a range of different approaches, organizational structures, but there is also the ECHA Forum that coordinates uh, EU-wide enforcement projects uh, I mentioned already the, rec the recommendation of the Commission's review on the functioning of the REACH regulation. Uh, one of the elements that we target there is to improve also the enforceability of the information. To give a concrete example, um, the Commission is, is challenged to consider the need for minimum requirements for exposure scenarios. Already by having a more granular format, this can improve the forceability. Alberto, are you currently able to reuse uh, and translate all the information that's provided to you via the supply chain for other purposes like storage, permits, transport, etc.? Sure. All this information will help us to prevent, mitigate or anticipate any risk linked to the dangerous goods or hazardous materials that we receive or we handle. For transport, for example, because this information is going to be critical to define the transport classification, how you need to ship your goods. For the storage, because you want to know the hazards of the products that you are going to store together, right? Or for handling, you know, to define the proper work conditions, you know, to assign if required the personal protective equipment, or for any additional permits that you may require according to the local legislation. Alberto, does the provided supply chain information also help you to improve the risk management measures and your PPEs that you choose for your employees? Yes, because all this information that you receive is to understand better the properties of the material and also the hazards. And knowing, understanding the material and knowing the working conditions, you can assess the risk link to the product and how it's going to be handled in the facilities. And like that, you are going to be able to provide the right, the proper working conditions for the employees, like the PP. Okay. Kevin, many initiatives are related to substances, but there are also many developments in relation to risk assessments and methods for risk assessments of mixtures. Yes, indeed. Um, as I mentioned, there, there are a number of, of, of methods being considered and explored. Uh, with the ENES network, we put our focus on, on two different methods. One is called, called LCID, LCID, it's lead component identification. And the other method that can have advantages in other contexts is, is called SUMI, which is safe use of mixtures. So ENES has been working on this uh, for some time now. It also has a renewed focus under the REACH review actions that I mentioned. Uh, which challenges ECHO to, to develop methodology for mixture, and we use the INES work on LCID and, and SUMI for that. Essentially, what they, what they both do, they're a way of, of um, enabling the, the downstream users to take the substance-specific information, DNL, PNEC, um, exposure scenario information, and then either amend or adapt or replace it entirely uh, into mixture safe use advice. Um, it helps the, the, the formulators identify the, lead, the, the components in the mixture. Um, it helps them develop more activity-specific advice based on their maybe enhanced knowledge of, of their customer needs. Um, we are doing at the moment uh, with, with Ines some, some pretty heavy piloting work looking at specific cases. 
Kevin, how will Europe take into consideration uh, the wider world of OSHA and EED uh, related legislations? So again, we have some work in ECHA to map the information requirements for REACH against OSH IED. We even look a bit further at product safety legislation. Again, we, we, we take this mapping and, and make some proposals, assertions, and then calibrate with a wider community. So this is some very specific work to see if we can a little bit close the gap. I should mention also the REACH Review Action 12.1 which is a challenge to understand how to support SMEs in using REACH inf information to be compliant with OSH. So again, this is, this is, this is very much linked. Finally, the, the REACH review re actions, uh, I already mentioned the, the minimum requirements for exposure scenarios, uh, and the last one is again the, the methods for mixtures. So that's a full suite uh, of activities to try and address these complex interrelated issues that, that inhibit supply chain information. So hopefully, uh, holistically, the output can, 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 can create the path forward to uh, a better quality of information, a better flow, a better use by downstream users. Yeah. Thank you very much. Kevin and Alberto, like a good supply chain, you delivered a lot of useful information on hazards and risks. Viewers, thank you for watching and listening to them, and feel free to spread the lessons learned of this interview on supply chain communication. <laughs>